Hello, my name is Arcuia Todd, and the purpose of this video is to teach God's daughters how to stand against the hollow suggestion and useless branch. The content will be taken from the book, Date Smart, Practical Biblical Dating Lessons for All the Single Ladies. This is a workbook and video series detailing each chapter of the book with the workbook questions and answers. Feel free to listen to the assessment question before continuing on with the lesson and share this video, the spiritual wisdom and that brings about maturity in dating relationships with your mate, your daughter, your niece, small group, Sunday school group, anyone you see who could use some spiritual maturity. This week we will be studying from chapter 22, His Convenient Woman. Question number one. How much do you observe your mate's actions in addition to listening to his words? God is teaching his daughters to observe a man's actions as illustrated in Matthew chapter 21 verse 28 through 31 King James Version, which states, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, Go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went and came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of the two did the will of his father, they said unto him the first, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Question number one. How much do you observe your mate's actions in addition to listening to his words? The second son in the parable said he would do the work but did not. The parable teaches a lady how to not be fooled by words by observing actions that accompany the words. Question number two. Does your companion put effort behind the words he speaks? If he doesn't, what can you do about it? You may meet a guy. He may get in touch and say he would like to see you but never makes plans to get together. He might say, I would love to see you sometime soon. How about a dinner and a movie? I miss talking to you. You have been on my mind for a while. Then, several months later, that scene repeats itself. He gets in touch with you with a warm good morning and continues with, It would be very nice if we could have dinner one evening. Is that out of the question? You say it is not out of the question. Then he responds, this is good news to me. I will call you soon to see when we can make that happen. Have a wonderful day. Then months later, you get a call that sounds much like the last one. Good morning. You were on my mind and I wanted you to know if we could have a wonderful day. Like the son who said he would work in the vineyard but didn't, a man may call and say he wants to get together but doesn't put any effort into those words. A guy may sing this song about how much he wants to see you. However, when he calls, he doesn't mention about anything you two about you guys getting together, nor does he make plans. Like the man with the two sons, we are warned about men who say they will do a deed, but do not. The Bible cautions us to be aware of words which amount to nothing. Some men will say one thing and do absolutely nothing. He is full of talk and no actions, like the young man in the parable. When you get a chance, feel free to tell him his actions do not convey what he speaks. Question number two. Does your companion put effort behind his words? If he doesn't, what can you do about it? Let him know his words are meaningless, that you do not take him to be a man whose words are meaningless. Question number three. How can you stand against the hollow suggestion? 
The second son in the aforementioned parable said he would do the work but didn't. There are men like that today. For instance, Roman was full of words only when he asked me to dance. And when I agreed, he said, not now. James produced words only when he stated, you are going to be my wife. But there was no connection outside the dance hall. What in the world? Learn to stand against the hollow suggestion. Every useless branch will be cut off and thrown into the fire. Luke chapter 3 verse 9. Are you hanging on to a useless branch? If God gets rid of useless branches, shouldn't we? Question number three. How can you stand against the hollow suggestion? See it for what it is and don't let it throw you. Question number four. Are you hanging on to a useless branch? A useless branch produces nothing good. Call a useless branch what it is, a useless branch. Question number five. What are fruitless deeds of darkness and what uncovers fruitless deeds of darkness? Why does God tell his daughters to respond to a man's actions? Responding to actions instead of words uncover fruitless deeds of darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 through 14 King James Version explains, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. But not be not ye partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Realizing vain words keep one from being fooled by words which have no merit. So realizing vain words keeps one from being fooled by words which have no merit. Question number five. What are fruitless deeds of darkness and what uncovers fruitless deeds of darkness? Words used to cause you to do the wrong thing. Knowing what is unacceptable to the Lord uncovers fruitless deeds of darkness. And question number six and the final question of this week. How are you to respond to fruitless deeds of darkness? The Bible says we are to expose them, to reprove them, so that they will turn around from that useless work. And we will end this week in prayer. Lord God, help us to understand what and how to not be deceived. We are your daughters and should stand proud and strong in your word that you give us. And as you help us to not be deceived by listening to what someone says to us, but then looking for evidence of what is spoken. And then to expose fruitless deeds of darkness, like your word tells us to do, to call that out so they will take note of it and change from being so fruitless and uh, workers of iniquity. Lord, we ask that you will be in our relationships so they will be pleasing and approved by your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next week, be blessed.